Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm working on this little watercolor piece and this is actually the second shot that I had of this one. So I pretty much completely painted this one before and then I decided to repaint it. But today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about some of the things that I learned and some of the benefits that I've gotten in the past and this time as well when I've repainted a piece or fixed it that way. Uh, but if you'd like to own a print of this piece, this is the April Patreon exclusive postcards. If you'd like to own it, this is the $10 tier over on my Patreon. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. This won't be available any other place or any time after this, but the original will also be available. So if you'd like to own the original painting, there's a link down in the description for my store as well. But let's go ahead and get started about this painting and talking about some of the things that I went through with it. So. Like I said, this is my second take on this piece. I completely painted this one right before I did this painting. It had the same concept, the same exact sketch actually, except for some very minor tweaks, same color palette. But there were a few very clear mistakes that I made in my process from the very beginning that I didn't really realize until I'd been really hours into the painting and I got to a point towards the end where I was trying to correct some of those issues and at that point they just weren't really going to be the way that I wanted it to. Uh, specifically I did not plan out the color palette and I didn't color out the or figure out the values for this one which as I was working on the first one it felt like I could just build it up and figure it out but I felt a lot more stressed working on it than I normally do or at least a noticeable amount more and as I was working on it I was making not sound decisions on where I wanted to place the value so that it read well because I didn't have that planned out I couldn't really make it the best it was at that point and that was probably number one thing that that this was a reminder of was that I absolutely always need to do color comps they make my pieces so much better and they make me a lot more confident when I go into painting I know it can be really hard to do a full line art for a piece and then be intimidated to start working on it because you don't want to ruin the line work. I've done that so many times, but having a color comp that's really solid helps that tremendously knowing that I have a plan, but also one of the things that I've really let slide and is so important is doing a value study as well. So for this one, I just took one of my gray watercolors and I only let myself mix that and I made sure that I had the placement for everything of where the darks were going to be and the lights. And this allowed me to make sure that it was balanced and that it had enough variety in the values that it was interesting, but they were placed in the correct places. So with the first shot that I had, I had the background so that it was all very one value. So it was really flat. And then her hair was really dark, so it made it feel very top heavy and there wasn't anything grounding it out. So when I redid this painting, I knew all the things that the values were struggling with. So when I was doing those value color comps, it was really easy to be able to build that in and to think, okay, I know this was a problem and I didn't foresee it until I was working on it. And that was so valuable because once I realized some of those errors that I had made and I was able to go back and fix them, I felt so much more empowered. I knew my plan and I knew which way I was going with it. And it was really refreshing to be able to start on the second piece. And even though it was very similar colors, I felt really confident in it. I knew what I was doing. I knew the attack plan and I wasn't experimenting on the piece and feeling nervous about that. And another thing that I fixed on the second go was I fixed some of the things in the sketch that I was being a little bit lazy about. So I worked a little bit more loose with this one than I normally do. And there are some areas that weren't really well defined in my sketch. And they look great as a sketch, but when it comes time to making it into a very precise, well-defined shape, it was a lot harder to make that leap. So her eyes specifically, they were very loose and it was hard to pick out where the shapes were. So when I ended up transferring them over there, they just didn't look good. They were really crooked. Uh, and another thing that I, in the end, realized was not a good shape was the side of her hair. One side of her hair was creating these odd negative shapes and it was something that I just didn't really pay attention to until I was adding other details to the last piece and then I was trying to correct that and I didn't really realize I was trying to correct it and then it just ended up going 
more and more downhill. So to be able to start from the beginning and get the the roots, the foundation of that area correct, rather than trying to make it look a little bit better later on, was very triumphant, I guess. I felt really good to be able to go back and make it right. This thing that I'd been struggling with for so long on the piece before, I could just fix the sketch, fix the line work, and then the design just looked so much better. And I don't repaint paintings that often, but I have found that when I do, in the right circumstances, it can make a huge difference for how I feel about my art moving forward. I've found that when there are pieces like this one where I like the original concept and it just really went downhill and I really fought with it, it can leave me with this really negative feeling. And even if I were to move on to another one, I'd have to shake that a bit. And honestly, there's been a couple pieces the last little while where I've been really just unhappy with it. I didn't like where it was going and I didn't like the sketches and I didn't like what other sketches I was doing. So I've been feeling really kind of frustrated with what I've been creating lately. So to be able to take this piece that at the end I was just feeling so done with it and annoyed that all these things weren't going right, I was able to go back to the beginning and make it a success rather than a failure. So at the end, I felt so good about this piece more so than if I had gotten it correct in the first shot, just being able to know that I had reclaimed it, I had made it the way I wanted it to, and I felt good. I felt like I could move on positively from it. And I think that's the huge thing about it is that the way that I think about my pieces and work on them can really affect the next one and the one after that. And I want to make sure that I'm putting myself on the right path for the next piece so that every time I finish one, or for the most part when I finish one, I'm feeling excited about working on the next one and excited about the new thing that I can go down. So to be able to take this concept and know that I did it right, or at least the way that I had it in my head, helps me go down the right path to think about the new things that I can be doing rather than still fixating on the things that I did wrong on this one, which is something that I do. So I feel so much better being able to have accomplished this one in the way that I wanted it to. But I will talk a little bit more about the values because actually I loved working on that and getting that figured out. And I, like I said, I don't really do these color comps for the values anymore, but that was a requirement for all of my watercolor classes when I was taking it in college where we had to do a certain amount of color comps and value studies and they had to correlate. So you'd have to be able to have two that, that fit the same. And that's how I worked with this one. I worked on the values first, and then I did another one that had the colors that matched. And it was so pleasant to be able to work with just the values. It was kind of like a puzzle piece where I was putting it together and making everything work and flow the way I wanted it to. And that's one of the things I love most about art is working on challenges like that, compositional things and value things that balance things out. So for this one, like I said, her hair was dark. It was dark in the first one, but I didn't have anything to balance it out and her hair was breaking the edge of the page. So it had a lot of weight to it. But for this one, I still wanted her hair to be this darker red color. So I had to take into account how was I gonna balance it out. And one of the things is I actually shifted the whole sketch down. In the first one, there was a lot more or a little bit more of this field below her feet. So it had more light area below her and it wasn't balancing out. But this one, I took a little bit of that ground out. And then I also made it darker. That was one of the big things is that I made the ground darker and I also did the clouds behind it lighter. So it helps imply that the ground is even darker. So it looks like it's, it has more value to it than it actually does. And that helps it give it weight visually still. And that just made a huge difference. And also I made sure to pay attention to the gradient of the sky behind her because I wanted more rich colors that also faded into light. So I made sure that the light side of this spectrum that I put into the background was at the top so that the hair would pop off and have lots of contrast. And then the darker area is closer to where the clouds come together. And in this one, I decided to make the sword dark, almost black. And the first one I did it really light, but this one I did it dark so that it have a lot of pop and contrast to the dress and the clouds behind it and it would help make it more of a focal point and it would tie in a bit with her hair so it would bounce from her hair to her sword and her face in the middle and the ground would help keep it balanced so it wouldn't feel unbalanced and tip over but 
I loved working on that part. And I can't wait to do more of that to be able to focus on something that's so integral to creating a really good piece. Because that's the thing is that without doing value studies, I can really struggle with making a piece look good. Whereas even if I use the exact same colors and I did a value study, it can turn out so much better. So I just need to remember to not be lazy and to make, your, make sure that I figure it out. And the sad thing is, is that I actually really love doing that. It's not even a chore for me really, but you know how some steps just kind of get pushed back and in the end you realize that you're not being as as good to yourself as an artist as you should be. That's kind of how I feel right now. Realizing this where it's something that I do love and it will make me a better artist and I just need to pay attention to that. And that is it for today. Like I said, you can get prints of this at my Patreon and lots of other exclusives and goodies down at the description. I also have the link to my store down there as well so you can get the original if you're interested. And again, I have all of the tools that I use listed down in the description so that you can see what I use to create this painting. But we'll be back next Wednesday with another video. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.